Hi everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. If you are dead set on getting a manual transmission pickup truck, you're looking at the only two available on the market. And what's more, these two brands, they don't put them in their base four-cylinder versions. They give manuals to their fun trucks, and that's what we're here today to test. That right there is the Jeep Gladiator Mojave. That is the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. And in this video, we're going off-road, and that is it. We're gonna hit the left hook. We have just enough snow on the ground to make it a little bit tricky, and then we're going up the hydro line. We're gonna find the mud and see how they do. So what powers these two trucks? Well, under the hood of the Gladiator over here is a 3.6 liter V6, putting out 285 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque, and that is sent through a six-speed manual transmission in this case. Over here in the Toyota, we have a 3.5 liter V6, so very similar engines, although the Toyota is putting out 278 horsepower and 265 pound-feet of torque. So when it comes to power, Power. These things are separated by less than 10 horsepower and 10 pound-feet of torque. This is going to be a really good comparison power-wise between these two engines. Now, the other thing I want to talk about today, of course, are the tires. That's a huge deal when you go off-road. Here on the Gladiator, we have the optional set of Falcon Wild Peak mud terrain. So those are some seriously aggressive tires. Over here on the Tacoma, we don't have stock tires today. We actually had to have a set of Bridgestone Blizzak winter tires. We are out in the snow. It's gonna be interesting to me to see how these winters fare next to these mud terrains. Just like with the engines, the suspension setups on both of these trucks, quite similar. They both use Fox shocks and they both use two and a half inch shock bodies. Now here on the Gladiator, that is a set of internal bypass shocks and there are remote reservoirs. And I'll show you a close up here, the remote reservoir, you can see that this line runs all the way up here and it's actually tucked up under that front skid plate, which is interesting. Um, but yes, both get upgraded suspension. One small difference I'll point out over here on the Toyota, these front two and a half inch Fox shocks, they don't have remote reservoirs. Now maybe you're asking, what is a remote reservoir? Well, essentially it adds more oil to the shock and what that is gonna do is allow the oil to stay cooler and cool oil works better. If a shock gets too hot, it's not going to work properly. So adding a remote reservoir will allow it to do its job over rough terrain for a long period of time. And the Tacoma here only gets remote reservoirs in the back, whereas the Jeep gets them all the way around. Okay, folks, we're on our way out to the trail right now. Um, and first thing I have to say is I just need to point out to you how rare this comparison actually is. So I said it off the top, there's only two pickup trucks with manuals, period, the Tacoma and the Gladiator. For 2020, the Nissan Frontier ditched its manual. That was the only other midsizer with one. Um, and we rarely get manual vehicles on media fleets. Basically, they recognize that not a lot of people buy manuals, so why do they want the media you know, showing them off? So the fact that we have two manual transmission pickup trucks that are basically the same trim level, you know, they actually line up for a comparison on the same day in the same place is crazy. It's absolutely, we're just, we're very lucky, but also Toyota especially really came through with this on this Tacoma. So thank you to both Toyota Canada and to Jeep Canada for helping us out with this one. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's gonna be a fun day with a couple of manuals. So we just got back here onto the left hook and we had a storm here about a week ago. It seems to have taken down about a 30, 35 foot pine. And it's just a little too much to bump over. So the Toyota is gonna come in here right now and we're gonna see if we can't drag this off the trail.
Go for it. Okay. All right, we muscled the last little bit by hand. We took care of it. But it's out. I'm tired now. And uh, I'm ready for a nap. Well, luckily for you, the Toyota's going to do the rest of the work now. Well, the Toyota did a good job already. You know what? Lots of power in reverse. Had no issue pulling that tree whatsoever. So kudos to Coma. Now we can go. The tree is clear, and I'm here in my taco. So I've actually got her down in four low right now. And uh, that's mainly because, you know, with manuals, gearing makes a much bigger difference than with automatics. And what I mainly mean by that is if you just want to creep along the trail like I am here, four low is going to dictate your speed. If I was in four high right now, I would have to be moving at a quicker speed or working the clutch more. And if you don't want to burn out your clutch, best thing you can do is this, get it in gear and leave it in gear and not touch the clutch. And now we're jumping into the deep stuff, everybody. <laughs> There's a lot of water out here today and a lot of ice. So far so good with the Blizzax. Nice Tacoma, oh, keep it up. Here's the deep section, and we're breaking ice today. Oh, oh, I think it rode up onto the ice for a second. Oh, keep on ice breaking. Come on, baby, keep on ice breaking for me. Yes. <laughs> Tacoma, nicely done. I'm stopped here at the bottom of this hill, and this is a perfect time to demonstrate one of the unique features here on the manual Tacoma, and that is clutch start cancel. So first of all, we're running right now. We're in four low. That is important. And now I've shut the truck off. So what you can do, turn the ignition on. You reach down here and press the clutch start cancel button. It's down here to the left of the steering wheel and the little light comes on. Now there's really two uses for this. The, the simple everyday use, hit the button, lean in the truck, make sure it's in neutral and you can start it. You don't have to touch the clutch. Now that's just a convenience feature. Here's why it's crucial off-road. So I shut the truck off again. Once again, clutch start cancel. This time, the truck is going into first gear. It is now in gear, okay? My foot is on the brake, parking brake is off, and now watch what happens. That was a thing of beauty. So if you saw what happened there, the truck was in gear, and when you use clutch start cancel, it allows the starter motor to actually turn all four of your tires. Now, why would you want that? You have to use your imagination here. You're on the edge of a cliff. You cannot roll back even an inch or you're going off. That's when clutch start cancel is crucial because you're gonna get equal power to all four tires with zero chance of rollback. You're just gonna get this nice smooth forward momentum. The engine starts and away you go. Uh, again, I think that's a super cool feature and you're only gonna get it if you buy one of these Tacomas. See ya. All right, last section here on the left hook and now I've got it in four high. We're gonna get a bit of speed going because of course, this is a TRD Pro. That's what it's meant for. And <laughs> yes, oh, the Fox Shocks do a nice job. This is a rough part of the trail right through here. Oh, but it's taking such nice care of me. Nicely done, TRD Pro. Man, uh, I love these off-road, high-speed off-road packages just from the perspective of you crash through there and the suspension just doesn't beat you up. It really does a nice job. Time to set off in the Jeep and 
before we even get on the trail, first thing I have to say, the seating position here in the Gladiator, way better than the Tacoma. The Tacoma, uh, it has such a high floor, you really feel like you're down on the floor, and that means you don't have the greatest sight lines. Here in the Jeep, you sit up tall, and you really have amazing sight lines around your vehicle. For me, a big dude, it's just straight up more comfortable. Uh, yes, that is absolutely noticeable the second you jump in here. Uh, so now, Let's start on this trail. So we know that the Gladiator here has better clearances than the Taco. So basically we know it's going to make it. But the difference is going to be these mud terrains and of course the power plant. Okay everybody, now we're jumping into the deep section here. And I do have it in four low still. I want to feel how sure-footed these things are in low range. And uh, so far... So good with these mud terrains. Ooh, this Jeep is a little more willing to rev. It really gets up in the RPM. And nice, I'm in it now. I'm in it now. Now the taco already broke the ice for me. Oh, it's riding up the ice again. <laughs> it's riding up the ice. Oh, I broke through there. Nice. Oh, keep moving, Jeep. Oh, a little stuck. Okay, it just took a second there, but I made it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, coming through ice like that is just hilarious. It was holding me in. I steered to the right. I was actually able to kind of jump up onto the ice over here and break through it. Um, so initially I can tell you, I do think that on, on this day today, these mud terrains are giving me a little bit more traction. Uh, I felt like I was digging into the Tacoma more. This Jeep was just nice and smooth. And, and like I said, it, it felt a little freer revving, uh, even in low range when I really wanted the power here in the Jeep, it was there. In the Tacoma, I was definitely digging into that pedal more. So uh, power wise, so far, the Jeep seems to be the one to get, but uh, let's keep going and we'll see. Because we are in the Mojave, this is the desert rated Gladiator, basically the opposite of what we're in today. Um, but because it's desert rated, it's meant for the sand. And a couple of those, a couple things here are specific for running in the desert, one of which is the transfer case. Unlike the Rubicon, which gets a four to one crawl ratio or low range ratio, I should say, uh, this truck only gets a two seven two to one. Why is that? Well, they actually, want you to be able to go faster in low range. The thought being that when you're running in the sand, you want wheel speed, you want your wheels to be churning away. So in low range, you're gonna get that power that you want, but you're also gonna be allowed to go a little bit quicker. Um, and you know what, like I said, I wasn't in sand today, I was in muddy, icy snow, but that kind of feeling did come through to me that this Gladiator in low range wanted to get up and go definitely more than the Tacoma did. Okay, now we're here at the last section and I've got it in four wheel high just like the taco and I want to get up a little bit of speed and see how the suspension takes care of me. Let's go Gladiator. Oh, this thing feels like it's got a bit more travel than that Tacoma does. Definitely, and it definitely gets up to speed quicker. Uh, when it comes to power, the on paper, the numbers aren't that different, but in the real world, this Gladiator just straight up feels more powerful. Um, and now coming through there, yeah, I also felt like this thing had more suspension than the Taco did too. Both of them did a nice job keeping me uh, fairly comfortable in here, but the Jeep was definitely a little bit better. Now I'm off the trail, and the last thing I should mention, I haven't locked any differentials yet today. Um, we have rear lockers in both of these trucks. Now if you get the Gladiator Rubicon, you can get a front locker, but they don't include that here in the Mojave. And on the TRD Pro, you can't get a front locker, uh, even if you wanted it. So we do have rear lockers here. So far, I have not needed them, but now it's time to go over to the Hydro Line. We'll see what happens there. Now I want to show you the cameras in these trucks. So they both have nose cameras. This is our front camera. These two cameras are down the sides of the truck. So that's actually showing you your front wheels. And then of course you have your inclinometer right there. Um, but what's really cool here on the Tacoma TRD Pro is this settings. So you hit that button. So what you are seeing there, and Dad, if you turn the wheel for me, you'll see it. You can see the wheels turning. That is showing you what is directly underneath the front half of your truck. And if you just start rolling forward really slowly here, Dad, you'll see it actually moves as you roll. See, so what it's doing is taking photos and then quickly superimposing them underneath the truck to always show you what's down there. It's pretty neat. 
So here's off-road pages. So first screen here, <coughs> you have an inclinometer, but then you also have your altitude and your actual uh, GPS coordinates. Oh, there's a big hole right there. Um, so that's pretty cool. I mean, it hasn't actually found our GPS coordinates yet, but it will. Now we can go over and see drivetrain. This will show you what you have engaged. So we're in four low, shows you your steering angle, and it shows you whether you're locked or not. We are not locked. Next, you have accessory gauges, so you can get all your information that you might need. This is what we started on. And then finally, you have trail cam. Now, trail cam lets you access both the nose camera and the rear camera as you're rolling down the trail. Of course, the nose camera is cooler because you want to see what you're running over. You do have tire lines there to see where your tires are going to be. And you have the clean camera button because that camera does have a sprayer. So if it gets muddy, you can do that while you're on the move. Although I gotta tell you guys, in a really cold climate, spraying that little camera doesn't really clean it totally. So the sprayer is much better in the summertime. And the other thing I'll say is yes, these cameras just, the resolution is way better than the Toyota. Jeep must spend a lot more money on its cameras than Toyota does, but I appreciate it because it just looks nice and crisp. All right, everybody, it's Hydroline time. And the taco got to break the ice on the left hook. So the Jeep's doing it here in the hydro line. And I think the Jeep's got a tougher job ahead of it. There's a lot more ice here. I just stalled. There's so much ice here. It just brought me to a grinding halt. That's one thing about manuals. You gotta keep your revs up. You know what? I want four low. I want the power. I want the power. Let's go back down into four low. First gear, let's hit it a little bit. There we go. It's climbing, but it's also breaking. This ice is nearly supporting this Gladiator. I can't believe it. So far, so good. So far, so good. We're breaking. I think the mud terrains are right up on the ice now. Oh, there's a breakthrough. Oh boy, when it breaks through, it's crazy. <laughs> I don't want to go too hard on her here. I can't believe I was riding on the ice. It's only December. I did not think this ice was that thick. Oh my goodness. But she's chugging through. Slowly but surely, she is chugging through. And you know what I love? I can feel that it's direct tire on ice contact bumper is not dragging. I don't think I'm even dragging the skid plate. The tires are doing all the work here. And this Gladiator with that 44 degree approach angle, it just means that whatever you point it at, that's basically what happens. The tires touch it first. So another thing I want to talk about real quick is, is the clutches in both of these trucks. And they're actually really similar. The engagement point is very low and it's a very smooth engagement point, which is exactly what you want in an off-road truck like this. You don't want a sharp biting engagement. And I should mention that these are both basically brand new trucks. So it's not like it's because the clutch is worn in that they're not biting hard. It's because that's how they are designed. And uh, I don't really feel one a little better than the other. Although I will say, I actually like the throws in the Tacoma a little bit more. If you do care about this sort of thing, the Taco, uh, it, it has just slightly shorter throws. They feel a little nice and a little notchier than here in the Jeep. The throws here in the Jeep are fine. A little longer, a little less precise. So just a quick shot of our ice. can see a lot of this stuff is like two inches thick this is the primo government issued stuff up here in Canada kind of surprised that it's that thick this early in the season anyway that's what we're crashing through today okay we're here in the Tacoma and I was gonna go in four high but based on my experience in the Jeep I'm actually gonna go down into four low because every time I would break through the ice it would stop me so quickly that I ended up stalling this thing which is no good uh, here's a problem she doesn't want to pop into four low here I should mention I like too that the gladiator has a physical handle for going down into four low whereas here in the Tacoma it's still just a dial and what just happened is I turned the dial it beeped at me I had to roll a little bit until it popped in in the gladiator sometimes you got to move a little bit too but with that handle it feels like you can physically kind of muscle it into place rather than trusting uh, the ECU to do it and we're off back into the ice now of course 
with broken ice in front of me, this becomes uh, a little bit easier. But it's no picnic out here for the taco. And oof, yeah, right away I can already tell you that uh, the clearance here, having the, the not even 10 inches of ground clearance, is going to matter. Because here in the Tacoma, my nose is dragging in this ice. Oh, this is some gnarly ice. <laughs> oh, the Tacoma's not breaking through here. Oh, interesting. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> so the taco rode up on the ice longer than the Jeep did. And don't forget, the Jeep is about 500 pounds heavier. I got to tell you, the mud terrains definitely had more traction. And now that I'm in these ruts, I feel like I'm in a slot car and this taco will not break free. Whereas the Jeep, I was actually able to turn those wheels while I was in the middle of the ice and it was able to turn not too bad. Um, the Tacoma is doing it but the Jeep did it a little better. Well, we are off the trail now, folks, so what is the verdict on this one? Well, if you go for the TRD Pro package here in the Tacoma, it makes it a formidable off-roader, and I love the fact that this thing is so small and lightweight. But if you really want the truck here that's gonna perform better off-road, you want to get this Gladiator Mojave. It made all of our obstacles seem so easy today. And when you get behind the wheel, you feel like its number one priority is off-roading. From the seating position to the suspension, the differentials, everything in there is just so set up to tackle stuff like this. So uh, if I was spending my hard-earned money, it's going to go to the Gladiator. But I want to hear what you guys think. So please go in the comments below right now. Let me know which truck would you buy while you're down there. Don't forget to hit like. Hit subscribe, hit that join button to become a member of the channel, and then come right back here to see what we are testing next. See ya.